Lily Allen. Lily Allen? Okay, cool, nice to see. Um, just for helping me, right? You help me, no one took that off or anything like that. I've got a little present for you, it's very simple. It's something that you can do when you get home. It is a, a colouring book. I know you're probably thinking you're a little bit old for colouring books. Um, parents are getting back. Have you noticed that adults are getting into colouring again? Have you heard it's like a stress relief? If you just do it and switch it. Anyway, right, the problem is with this colouring book, right? It's a magic colouring book. So all the pages are black and white until you click. And when you click, they all go coloured. Right, and then, I had one woman there going, how's that done? I was going, forget the orange, well, how's he done the kid's magic trick? Uh, but if you click too many times, it does all go blank as well, all right? So you've got to be careful, you know, do that. I would give you that, but I'm not allowed. But there is a, a stand over there, you can go and get one at the end of the show, that one's for you. Uh, kids, there's some other magic stuff on that stand over there, some signed posters. If you want to have a look at it on your way out, that'd be lovely. Um, but thank you very much. Give her a round of applause for looking after the box. Right, the reason I gave you this box right at the beginning of the show is I wanted to make sure that there was nothing I could do with this box. No way I could tamper with it in any way. It's obviously in a 2020 Ziploc bag. I'll get rid of the bag. And inside the bag was a wrapped up present. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna keep what's inside the present. I'm sorry. Um, let me see if I've got my this. Um, I'm gonna open up the present. I wrapped it very tight. And when I say a present, it's not the most exciting present in the world. It contains one of those metal tins. Parents, you probably use them to, to put savings in kids. You might even put your pocket money in them. Inside there, I put my favorite ever magic trick. And I'm gonna end the show this evening by showing you my favorite ever trick. It's a card trick. We are going to end the show on a car trip, and you're like thinking, really? That's your fate? Yes, it is, but let me explain. In the 1950s, there was a magician by the name of David Burglass. Absolutely true, what I'll tell you now. Apparently, he could go up to any audience, he could ask random people to name a card, and then somebody else to name a number, and without shuffling or doing anything to the deck, their card would be at that number. He would literally just count to it, and it would be there. Now, as a magic geek, I get quite excited by that. You lot go, it's not as good as the orange or even the colouring book. Um, but the reason I get excited is this is absolutely true, right? And this is a bit of geeky math, but I'm a bit of a maths geek. So, here's the thing. If you were all to take a deck of cards right now and you are all to shuffle it a thousand times, you will never ever have the exact same sequence of cards in order ever again. The chances of that are so infinitesimal, it's, uh, it's not happening. So for example, they're saying that the odds are, if you were to shuffle a deck of cards, the chances of that exact sequence ever existed before in the history of mankind is microscopic. So you could keep doing this every moment for the rest of your life and you will never have the exact sequence in order again. When you know the odds of that, and you know that that's true, when they can say any card at any number and they match, in my head, that's like as close to real magic as you could actually get. But this guy, David Burgas, never actually told us magicians how we did it. So we had to scramble around and try and figure out how to do it. And I'm going to try and end the show like this tonight. I'm going to take a deck of cards, hope you can see it nice and clearly on the screen. I'm going to spread them onto the table. I'm not going to pick them up, shuffle them or do any of that again. Uh, at the beginning of the show, I asked somebody over here to name a, a card or think of a card. Who was that? No, you, did you? Who wrote? Oh, was it, was it you, uh, Frankie? Yeah. You, you came up, you, you, what was the card? My first one? No, the one you wrote down and didn't tell anyone. Oh, ten of hearts. Did you have to look at it again? Did, yeah. you, did you forget? It's Sunday night, it's fine. You said the ten of? Hearts. Ten of hearts, thank you. And over here, somebody thought of a number. What number was it? Eight. And again? Forty-three. Forty-three, really? I've got to count to the number forty-three. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant, all right. <laughs> ten of hearts. Yeah, I'm getting there, yeah. 43. Strap in, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. That there is the 43rd card 
the end of the show, Ten of Hearts. Oh, dropped it. Come on. But that was a really high number, mate. You're almost messed me up there, fella, I'm not gonna lie. Here's the thing, on your way out, especially the dads are gonna go, well, what would have happened if you'd have thought of the number 44? We'd have a completely different ending of the show. Because if, my friend, you would have thought the number 44, it would have been blank. So was 45 and six. In fact, the entire rest of the cards were blank. In fact, the card before it, and the card before that, and that, and that, and that. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, every single card in that entire deck was completely and utterly blank, except for the 43rd card, the Ten of Hearts. Enjoy your stay here. I've been Ben Hanley. Thank you.